Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today we are going to take a look at a video that was posted on the YouTube channel called Rise of the Moors. The title of the video is Meet and Greet with Moors in Southern Florida. I saw this video on the Sovereign Citizen Reddit thread. Well, the Sovereign Citizen um, criticism Reddit thread, am I being detained? And there's just so much here uh, that instead of making an hour long video, okay, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna interrupt. I know some people don't like this format, um, but I thought it was best for this particular video in order for me to get my points across. So we're gonna do it for this video. Some of you will enjoy, many of you won't. However, the full video, if you wanna watch it without my content, is, is in, in the description below. Um, but before we get into uh, this juicy steak of a sovereign citizen video, my name is Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is the Common Sense Academy. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, what I'm trying to do right now is get to 10,000 subscriptions, so a free, easy way to support the show, get me to 10,000, is just to subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later, only after I get to 10,000, um, but if you get me to 10,000, I'm good. YouTube opens up new features that I can use to make even better content, so help me get there. Also, sign up for my email list below. Uh, is the link. You will get a free PDF of the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement written by yours truly. It's a couple pages long, totally free just for signing up. Same principle there. If you don't like my email list, you can just unsubscribe later on, but go ahead, subscribe, check it out. I'm going to send you free stuff every week. Now, before we get into this video, everyone, uh, raise your glass in the air. Um, today I'm back to one of my signature drinks, Diet Coke. I survive off three beverages, Diet Coke, water, and coffee. What are the three beverages that you survive off of? I also drink some alcohol. Otherwise, those are my three staples. Today, I felt like a cold, fizzy Diet Coke. So whatever you have to drink, raise it in the air. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Okay, now let's begin with the uh, meet and greet with Moors in Southern Florida. This to be handled that. That's how it's supposed to be. So we're supposed to have our own shit. They have their own shit. Then we co we communicate via the treaty in federal court. That's how it's supposed to work. But since they're so close, we think, well, you're my sheriff. Nah, you're not my sheriff. You're part of the United <laughs> gotcha. States. Gotcha, gotcha. So if you do something, I go to your federal government and I tell on you. Gotcha. That's really what it is. Yeah, that's, that's what it Okay, sir, listen. Yeah, that's how it works between perhaps two actual individual foreign countries. But you are not in a foreign country. You're living in the United States of America. If you were an actual Moroccan citizen in Morocco, then what you were you what you are saying may or may not be true. You do not have individual nationhood status within the United States. Now, I will say there are there are Look, the Native Americans, they have reservations. They have some of their own local laws. However, the laws of the federal government still apply to the Native Americans on reservations in the United States. There are other peoples in other countries who have nationhood status. I'm here to tell you that the Moors, the Moroccans, the United States don't have that. And that treaty that was created almost 300 years ago was just a treaty of friendship and peace between two countries. Those types of treaties are signed all the time. If you took those treaties literally, then any person in the United States uh, is pretty much their own country because um, we are a nation of peoples who have immigrated to this country. You're just wrong, sir, and you don't communicate through the federal courts. The federal courts exist to uh, to uh, ameliorate and hear disputes. You don't communicate through them, and you do have to follow the laws. Yeah, that's all it is. Except we are a separate nation of people. That's why this too is fucking. It's dumb. It's fucking dumb. Simple. <laughs> 
we are not under their jurisdiction whatsoever. Yeah. I, I get that, but which means they don't work for us. Because Morris keeps saying, yeah, they're on my land, so I get to tell them what to do. No! Our ancestors recognize them as a separate nation of people. That's why we have a treaty with them, meaning they're separate. We can't tell them what to do. They have their own independence, just like we have our own independence. But since you're independent and I'm independent, we came together and had a treaty. This is how we're going to negotiate with each other on, on, on my land. This is how you can do business on my land. So if there's a Again, this is just a gross misinterpretation of the treaty. Regardless, if you know anything about American history or even your own past, okay, the majority of, so, you know, America has a very uh, hateful, tragic, and sad past. We also have a, a very incredible, optimistic, and beautiful past, okay? But part of the tragic past was the transatlantic slave trade. And many of the African Americans who live in the United States today, okay, were brought over via that, that slave trade, okay, which was set up originally actually by the Portuguese, but later adopted by other colonial countries, including the British, all right? The majority of um, African Americans that were brought over to this country came from um, basically north, northwestern, Central Africa, okay? The the way the slave trade worked was certain tribes, okay, in on the outer regions of the West African shores, okay, would go inland and capture uh, other tribes, bring them back, and sell them to the slave traders. Very sad, very gross, hateful, terrible period of history, okay? Um, so, most of the African Americans in this country come from likely those type, those countries, okay? They don't come from Morocco. The truth about Morocco is that Morocco, um, you know, even before the slave trade, uh, was oftentimes a part of the Ottoman Empire, okay, in other Muslim empires, and was a, a developed power in and of its own right that could compete with the European countries of the time. So the, the, the Moroccans weren't, you know, the, listen, everybody was probably selling slaves to one degree or another, okay? There's a history of, uh, of you know, actually Ottomans and North Africans raiding Southern European countries and capturing white slaves and bringing them back to their country, okay? The Ottoman Empire did that for hundreds of years. Regardless, the, the likelihood that most African Americans are actually Moroccan is extremely, extremely low. Therefore, even if Morocco has a, had a treaty with the United States that gave you some kind of status, it wouldn't apply to you. You're almost certainly not of Moroccan ancestry issue between any one of my people and your people, we go to federal court. That's how we do it. To avoid wars. But now since they're not honoring the treaty, guess what we have to do? Talk crystal with them. It's not a real treaty. It's not the treaty doesn't say what you think it does. We're not at that level yet. That's where it's going. See, that's that's a thing. That's, that's, a, that's another frustration. And if you look at what the prophet said, he said, before that great and awful day that is sure to come. Meaning yes. you can't avoid this yet. Yes. No, there's no way. So like he said, it's, it's either you're ready or you're not. And, and, and just this, is, this is another <laughs> frustration is like we right. are the generation that's actually doing something we had parents and, and their parents and their parents who knew this information and they didn't do something so you you have to you know there's two questions one did they not do it because they didn't have the capacity to do anything like us for example i know the law i know what's right and what's wrong but I can't go into a venue and tell a judge what to do. I'll get disappeared, mm -hmm. right? So you have to ask yourself, did our forefathers who knew this, did they choose to you know, lay low so that the information could keep passing on to this point, or did they just not care? That is No, 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 your forefathers, if they knew it, they knew that it was incorrect, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. They knew that it was incorrect. Bad point because there's my family, the more I talk my to family the more than likely got snatched up in the center of this country and got exported from in front of eminent domain. domain. I've done uh, record searches, and as far back as I can go, you find Russians under my last name, Buncey. You find uh, 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 Powhatan. You find and I'm talking about all over the center where they first came across from their colonies. 
before they even thought about coming down to the South. Like, all of that center area, Chief Wabunsi, W-A-U-B-O-N-S-I-E. In all of their, in all of the tribal tongues, Wa means what or it is. Wa means it is. So what's that man's name? It is Bunsen. That's my ancestor. A, a lot of things you gotta keep How in mind too is like, the, the Moors who couldn't escape Andalusia, they had to convert to survive. Like yeah. my last name, yeah. Mendez, yeah. when you do the research on it, there's actually a website called MikeMendez.org and he goes deep into it, how he starts talking about how the Mendez name comes from the Visigoths and all the Gothic people and this, that, and the third. But in the website, he quotes and he goes, I was contacted by somebody. Right there, you know everything's wrong when they're talking about the website. Now, it was interesting, that, you know, again, we've seen enough videos where these sovereigns, their whole historical perspective is based on a website, it's based on YouTube, okay? Cite a, his, a historian, a scholar, or an actual valid historical text. Read the treaty that you're talking about, and you will plainly see that it's wrong. Now, here's the thing. It's true that um, early on in, well, after the fall of the Roman Empire and a couple hundred years later, barely even a couple hundred years later, um, it is true that the, uh, the, uh, the, the Umayyad Caliphate, which had its start in, in Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, uh, Israel, Lebanon, Syria area spread and captured all of North Africa and captured a portion of Spain. And uh, the Muslim Caliphate ruled Spain for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay, it was, uh, the Kingdom of Al Andalus, and he talks about Andalusia. Okay, the, the you know they're relying on on some historical accurate history, but they're skewing it. They're skewing it. Okay. There's no like North African, like presence in the United States. I'm sorry. It's minimal. It number one, it's never been a large historical source of immigration. Number two, it was not a large historical uh, um, source of individuals who were co brought here under coercion either. So you're just, you're just, it's just wrong, man claiming to be the original Mendes family who derived from the Sephardic Jews who were the Moorish Emirates in Spain. However, uh, this is untrue. Then if it's untrue, why did he, why did he reference it as the original right. Mendes family? Yeah. Same thing with Alvarez, Alvar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's fucking too. You know, I was saying on other cats, other, other like um, in, in some <coughs> islands, they'll have on houses, certain symbolic certain symbols, right? Like, I don't know, you go past a house and you see a line, right? That don't look like nothing to nobody, but this will tell everybody who needs to know if the phone stop working, if the internet stop working, you look at that symbol, you know for a fact there's guns here, there's food here later on tonight. There's somebody here who can actually transport us somewhere later on tonight. A different way for us to communicate without the dependency of them things. You know, because yeah. the more aggressive we become, the more they'll start tapping into that stuff. They'll yeah. start tapping into our yeah. phones, our TVs, yeah. and our internet and shit. Yeah. You know, they'll start looking at stuff like that. So one, of, one of the things that I got was walkie talkies, man. But even well, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna come up with plans um, for secret communications, what you don't want to do is record those plans on an iPhone or a smartphone and then put it on the internet because whoever it is that you think is watching you now knows exactly what your plan is for your secret gatherings. Not smart, man, not smart. Even those are limited. Even while we're talking, they, they, I got while we're talking. They developed this thing called the Doppler radar, which can like, it can actually figure out who you are based on your voice from miles away. It's called the Doppler radar. Yeah. Can you hold this to, to sense the vibrations in the air, and from a mile away, they'll they'll know who's talking. Like literally, oh, that's that's Oliver. That's that's this person. No, just from the vibration. What kind of band around? Well, there's a root, <laughs> so if you chase it, right? be careful with the root. So like anything that they come up with, we have to come up with the most pragmatic caveman action, caveman way to just protect this and still keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes.
Like any minute, they come out. You mind if I say this? Yeah. Nah, that's dumb. <laughs> that's stupid. That's stupid. How long are we going to be here for, guys? As long as you want. So if you all leave now, then we leave. <laughs> I'm not promoting to leave now. I'm just, I'm just hungry, man. Same as my brother right here. Some Somebody go get some takeout or something. something. Get something to eat, guys. Um, just one thing I want to tell. It's a picnic. Uh, just to reiterate to you guys, um, when we first come into this information, we want to detach from everything and anything. But I'm sure you'll notice real quick that you can't completely 100% detach, um, and especially alone. And you, you, I mean, you can, but you won't be able to do it for very long alone. Um, so. Don't feel guilty about, you know, doing stuff in the straw. Just make sure you ARR, sign the straw, UCC 1-308, um, you know, whatever you do, or TDC, whatever. Um, yeah, just make sure you cover. Okay, the UCC is not going to give you magic powers. Number two, uh, you shouldn't be telling people to detach from society that's kind of harmful. Um, and I don't know what that TDR she referenced is. I'm going to look that up. Whatever you're gonna do, don't feel guilty. Just know that once we establish a government, that then we can just be completely rid of, you know, anything. So don't guilt yourself because I do it all the time. You know, I always be like, damn, I'm a dirty more because I just did this in my in my straw. You know what I'm saying? But I, I went through that myself. So. <clears throat> yeah, I, I was just telling the more. I just had to go and get uh, a license again because. Um, I let my license expire, I let the passport expire, I'm like, fuck that, I don't need none of this, da, da, da. And then my bank account, I was like, oh dang, I pay a lot of things in my bank account, and, and I got some fiat <laughs> in my bank account that I can't even access no more because my license, I don't got the license, and da da da, so I had to go and get one just to get access to my fiat. That's crazy. What do you think about a world government passport? Um, Who's the world government? What's their nationality? They don't have a nationality. Then they don't exist. Yeah, listen, ma'am, if your license expired, what you need is a form of ID, a form of valid ID uh, issued to you by the state. Yeah, in order to access your funds from the bank, because they don't want anybody stealing from you. They're protecting your money. So uh, for me personally, who, who enforces that? <clears throat> Today you got the World Service Authority. Who's that? For me personally, honestly. Where they at? In <laughs> Washington, D.C. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that where Rome is? Isn't that where the head of Rome is? Oh. Me personally. I would not contract with them. Yeah. If, if I'm you're where the head of Rome is, mm -hmm. here, I'm not doing business with you. Uh-oh, it comes to Vatican. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, the head of Rome. The Moorish passport wouldn't work either. A Moroccan passport wouldn't Why? work either. Because we don't have a government to back it. There you go. Right. But don't feel guilty. If you need to get a passport, the prophet said, keep all the old business and the old name. Yeah. Get that shit in the straw. Because then if you go and put your free national name and passport, what are you doing? Putting the free national you back into the U.S. Yeah. jurisdiction. The straw's already there. So if you're going to get yeah. a passport, exactly. put it in that. Control. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, control. Just like Make sure you don't put your citizen. Right. You can do a non-citizen passport in the straw. But just because if you do, but don't think that that exempts you from anything. Because literally, if you look at the, um, the, is it a UCC, the USC, right? For the, is it a USC or UCC? Some, USC. Um, for, you got something right here? You got it. Um, if you look at the, the, the code for the passport, it says, um, whether you are a citizen or not, Whoever has a passport to the U.S. has to pledge allegiance to that, you know, that corporation. Yeah, so even if you check off you're a non-citizen, you still have to pledge allegiance to the United States in order to have their passport. This, so. is, this, this is the situation that Moors don't want to address. We are not going to be able to do anything until we have a military. And a government. Whether yeah. that be travel, international. Oh, my God. Now they're talking about having a military? I mean, you got to be kidding me, man. This is... This is why you guys are listed as a as like a terrorist organization, possible te you know domestic terrorist organization with the FBI. Um, if anything that you're saying at all about your true nationhood is true, you need to send um, some ambassadors to the country of Morocco. 
I mean, send some ambassadors to Morocco to 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 um, validate your official status. Really? Why? Who's gonna fucking enforce it? Whether it be or getting our IDs recognized on the scale that we want it to be, Good. why? Good because to who's gonna you. enforce that? We we what Thank Moors do know. is we keep and I and I speak to a lot of Moors, so yeah, I'm not peace. I'm not blaming y'all. I'm just saying He's this is what Moors do. Consent. They'll say, well, why can't we just go to the UN? We don't even. We don't even have our own goddamn state. Half of y'all motherfuckers didn't even know each other. So what you talking about? Who's going to go to the UN? If y'all just met each other, how are we going to go to the UN and say, yeah, this is our people? We don't even fucking know each nah, other. Nah, it's because most people say, uh, we should go to the UN. But when they say that, it's like, you should go so to the UN. So <laughs> if you look at the UN, if you look That's at the UN, <laughs> if you look at the UN, every nation state, their executive appointed someone to represent that nation state at the UN. So who's going to appoint someone for the Moors with no sultan? Because that's the sultan's job. So how are we going to get to the UN with no sultan? No governor. I'm a little confused. I, I guess that they're not actually saying that they're a part of the now existing country of Morocco. I mean, I don't know. I need some clarity here. Um, I think it's dangerous that they're talking about a military. You know, there are these nations within nations, for instance, the Kurds, etc., etc., um, they may even have like some cursory representation at the UN. Don't quote me on that. Um, but this is this is legit dangerous, especially um, for this talk to be happening in a country um, where your civil rights are by and large uh, protected by law. What do you mean? What do you mean? I was reading a book uh, it's called Morocco from Empire to Independence. Page, I think, 296, it says that the French had the Sultan of Morocco sign a paperwork, some sort of paperwork. That complete, that was like the last blow. That How'd that guy cite page 296? I'm impressed. The Sultan got it. After that, the little limited power that he had completely gone. So makes you think, because if you also read the uh, Treaty of Peace and Friendship, obviously it's between the Sultan of Morocco and, and the Christian nations. Morocco is now an independent nation state with uh, no obligations to the French at all, sir. So what power did this guy have? Why is it that he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing? So you kind of look at that history and you see how they just got a little bit of it. Just... Yeah, but don't just look at the one person. Look at the state of the nation. Outside if the that, Sultan has three motherfuckers clear. supporting him, clear. then he don't got no power. Especially if the Moors don't want to fight, yeah. then what the fuck's the point of having a Sultan? Yes. Now, let me read this right here. This is from the Quran that Noble Jarli told you to read. This is chapter 47. It says, Those who believe say, Why is it not a surah sent down for us? But when a surah of basic or categorical meaning is revealed and fighting is mentioned therein, Thou will see those in whose hearts is a disease looking at thee with the look of one who is swooned at the approach of death, but more fitting for them. So all of us see that there's a fucking problem with these Europeans. Anytime I bring up fighting, more change the subject. I'm not saying y'all. I'm saying in general. The, probably because no matter how bad it is, and I agree, look, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that um, things are perfect in the United States or that they're perfect for, um, you know, a, a minority individuals in the United States. There's a lot of discrimination that does exist. I think the country has come a long way and that needs to be recognized. And there's still some discrimination that exists. The country has come a long way. There's still discrimination Okay, but uh, even in the presence of such discrimination, um, life here is still pretty good. Life is pretty good. Do you really want to fight? I mean, wow. That is the only way we're going to get us our salvation. There's no other goddamn way. Don't believe me. Look at what the prophet said. The European's not going to stop to look deaf in the face. So now you tell me what the fuck does that mean? No, hold on, wait, hold on. Let me let me read this real fast. I ain't done. That's legit. This is legit this dangerous. Quick. What kind of fight? What kind of fight are you talking about? <laughs> There's only one type of fight. Whatever, whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. Check this out. Check this out. 
This is the same book that your prophet told you to read. Watch this. No nation can go on with a treaty if the other party violates it. Any questions? It's called tacit acquiescence. It continues, right? Just, have, I signed a credit card like five, six, ten years ago or something like that. They keep sending me new ones. I never signed for it. <laughs> they keep renewing it. So since there's no sultan to say this ain't valid, we're going to war, then guess what? They're just going to keep renewing it automatically. Because in the treaty it says there's, a, I think, a four-year window. I, 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 I don't think that there's any sultan out there that wants to go to war with the United States. I mean, wow. That if a party wants to end the treaty, they have that, that window of time to negotiate. If they don't, then it's just it's perpetual. So again, without a sultanate, we can't end anything and we can't fucking start anything. <laughs> even then, like, even if we had a sultanate, we had an army, you know, our empire was vast. It encompassed various continents. So we have to realize we're not going to, you know, we're not going to get expel the European from North and South America in one night. We're going to start with a portion. Like the empire of Morocco, yeah, we no, had an empire, fight. right? But the kingdom of Morocco got its own independence for its own little kingdom. And it formed its own little kingdom. And I think that's what's going to have to happen here eventually. I, I think only the guy that's doing most of the talking, uh, I think he's the only one that really actually believes this crap. Actually, at a certain point, we're going to have to form either a kingdom or a, or a different form of republic, but we're not going to get the whole continent as a whole. When, once we make the first move and we have a government and we have an army, others are going to start joining. People from all over the world who, who have value in our cause are going to start coming in and they're going to start fighting for us. But no, with us. Not with us. With us. Right. With us. But somebody, right, somebody has to, you know, make that, establish that first country. Well, establish a study group. Establish a study group. Yeah. Establish a study group. And then whoever you appoint amongst yourselves to represent yourselves, I'll contact them and we'll go over how I want it how I want things to be done. Of course, you're going to have your own autonomy because I'm not here. So you're going to have your own laws to regulate yourselves. But then there's Rise of the Moors organizational laws that you're going to have to follow if you want to be under that name. Because remember, it's just a name. It's just a name and credibility. And since it's mine, it has to be ran a certain way. You understand that, right? So it's, it's not a dictatorship. It's a monarchy. But it's a constitutional monarchy. You understand what I'm saying? And if you look at what the prophet had, that's exactly what he had. So all I'm doing is mimicking what he did. So if you want to be part of that, that's basically what it is. Uh, I mean, this is actually, uh, I, I thought this video was going to be fun. I'm actually worried. Um, you know, I I hope these guys are just, you know, I, I mean, just, just rapping, just talking, not, I mean, this is worrisome. Are we talking like... Uh, uh, that shit. Rudder and sextant like organized positions? Yeah. Wazir, Shadow, even move Yeah. It's, okay. Okay. So. Yeah. FYI, for the most part, a constitutional monarchy is a little better than a dictatorship because you would have, like, say, um, England had a constitutional monarchy. Now that I wouldn't call it that any longer. Okay, it's not the monarchy is is practically irrelevant. They have some small influence. Anyway, constitutional monarchy is like a king and a parliament. Okay, and then there's a, a constitution that constrains the power of the king and also keeps power for certain things in the legislative body, which would be parliament in the case of England. A dictatorship is solely the rule of a single man. So he made a good point there. I mean, he's right about that. Right. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, your own sui juris political uh, drill society, but it's going to be administered with me at the top. So just like, just like it's a state a nice government, grand. you got I mean, your local municipal government, the then you got, um, you know, whether it be county or city, then you got the state, then you got the nation. That's all it is. Huh? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah so Rosalind Moore, you get it for free. There's a um, uh, Black's Law Dictionary on there too. If you don't have one, there's a fourth edition that you can download for free. And my fourth book is a, is about the uh, Peer of Divan. It goes. I mean, look, you really don't need to be pairing Black's Law Dictionary with the Quran, okay? Um, Islamic law is more or less its own thing. Um, you can get everything that you need about it from the Quran. It, you, you ain't going to get anywhere with Black's Law Dictionary. I, I, don't know, I don't know how you mix those two. More into detail about how it's set up. It's just my hard drive got uh, messed with. So now I gotta fix it. Somehow, let's let's. The FBI on, fucking messed with it. I already know what it is. That we can get that book back because he only had it saved to the hard drive. I'm like, you didn't have it saved to your computer and to your hard drive. That's the point. I have, two. I have a server that you can access online. Ah. Hmm? I have a server that you can access online. What does that Interesting. Mean? Yeah, that means that you can back up whatever you got into my server into other servers because that's what I do. But when I plug my hard drive in, it doesn't open up on the computer. The light no, will turn on, but it doesn't. No personal hard drive. Yeah. What I'm saying is, talking about like a Dropbox, something like that, but it's personal. It's personal. So what I'm saying is, whatever you got, you should back it up. But she's saying back yeah. it up, like the shit out of it. Anywhere. I have like three or four copies of the same yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is the server that I can access everywhere I, I go yeah. online. That's what Jay was trying to do. Then I got in, individual servers that I uh, hard drives I never connect to the internet for that same reason. That I have other ones that files that I want on the regular basis that I do connect to a computer because I access is mine. No, it's mine. It's, it's Synology. Okay, Synology. Look into it. Synology server. It's like online service. It's, it's like Dropbox, but it's your personal stuff. So, well, once I get that shit open, I gotta produce. I gotta get this book out. Yeah. It's a. It's fine. It's fine. It, it, co it covers everything. The entire structure of the Moorish government. Everything. There's no questions. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I did it is because, I don't know, if, I, I talk about it in the book itself. I got The Rudder and Sexton by Taj Tariq Bey. Amor gave it to me. For free. So, alright. I'm going to put this shit out. Because it's our government, so we should know how it's shit structured. Um, I did that. And someone called me close to Taj. I'm not going to say any names. They called me and said, you know, who gave that document to you? And I said the person's name. And they said, oh, good thing it wasn't me because I don't want to be responsible for this. I'm like, what? what are you talking about? It was a text message, actually. They didn't call me. So I have screenshots of the text message in the book. <laughs> then they said, uh, you know, you should, you should talk to Taj about this. And then another more went on Instagram and, w and was talking to other more saying, yes, me and so-and-so had this information in higher degrees about the rudder and sexton. And then they say, you know, per great seal, sincere bullshit, then you can get it. But how would you ask for a document you know fucking nothing about? Because they, they're saying upon request, and you once you're a sincere member, then you can get it. So now you're telling me you're the gatekeeper and you get to determine who's sincere and who's not. But the prophet said he took the cover of all secret societies, so why are you keeping the shit a secret? And these are people close to Taj. So then I text Taj and said, I have the rudder and sextant that you wrote on my website for free. I was operating off the principle of since I got it for free, I'm giving it to the people for free. So-and-so said I should contact you because they're saying only certain people can get it. He said, this information should be given to Moors at all costs. Okay, there you go. So why is it people close to him saying don't do it, but the man who wrote special. the book is saying do it? They want to feel like they're on Taj's oh, special. Fuck out of here. So I got all that shit in the book themselves. so you can see this is what we're dealing with. This is why we haven't fucking gone anywhere. <clears throat> that server that I'm telling you, we can add, keep adding terabytes. Yeah. Um, so all the books that I got, whatever it is that you guys got, we can upload it today. You guys will all have access to it. Obviously. Yeah. We could, that would be a way to, we can mirror it. That's going to be like an ill soccer game. A way to keep everything <laughs> safe. It doesn't matter what happens to, to the hard drives, it'll always mirror to the other one. Because it is mirrored. And then you can keep it for yourselves and you can always have that extra yeah. extra stuff there. I need to get this hard drive fixed. Yeah. I'm about to just produce the book as is and then I don't know, update it in no. a few years. <laughs> no. Or add you stuff put in a few years. Sweat and tears That's what I'm saying. So once I get this shit up, I gotta 
At least do it. I told you, PDF we already said Sam, contact him. He can most likely pull that out. I hope so. I really, I, I highly yeah. believe that I've seen him take shit apart, yeah, pull purpose. parts out. I, I really do believe that. Okay, comment sensors, that's the completion of the video. Really, I, you know, I thought that this was just going to be, you know, the Moors uh, talking chatting about you know some of their ideas etc etc this guy starts talking about getting a military together like bro i mean you're going that you're going a little far there man i'm just saying i'm just saying i don't think look there's a lot of different organizations in this country for instance the one that i couldn't remember before you got the freemasons right they're a club they got a structure with like a grand you know uh vizier or whatever and i understand that there's this the moorish temple that exists as a legitimate non-profit if you want to have a club with a structure where you talk about where you have shared values and a shared history and even if some of it is maybe fictional or not backed up that's fine. I mean, this is America, the greatest country in the world. I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for forming uh, social clubs and groups where people who are like-minded can talk about certain ideas. We have hundreds of them, thousands of them in this country, and it's one of the things I love about this country, all right? And our government doesn't go around shutting these people down. But don't be, I mean, talking about getting a military together, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. Um, I'm just saying, that's a lot. And you put this up on YouTube. I don't know. I just, you know, I don't know. One thing I do know, though, is they got the history all wrong, all right? The North Africa was actually Roman, okay, for almost a thousand years, all right? They spoke Latin, all right? Uh, after the fall of the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire more or less controlled Northern Africa, and a form of vulgar Latin was spoken, just like a form of vulgar Latin that was spoken in Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, Romania, which turned into the current Romance languages of the day, okay? Later on, the uh, the Islamic Caliphate swept through, okay, and it Islamicized that area of the world. They, they learned Arabic, okay? That, that Those empires took on many transformations until modern times when you had the Ottoman Empire, okay? None of these individuals here in this this video are likely of genetic ancestry with the people of North Africa. I don't know that for sure, okay, but um, a lot of them probably aren't. On top of that, what they're talking about as far as them having influence in North America or South America, it's not true at all. Didn't exist. They did rule Spain for many years. Um, you know, go have your temple, have your club. Don't talk about a military, please. Um, and don't cite the USC. That's the United States code. That means you're giving, um, that means you're giving credibility to the federal law, which you oppose. Um, so I don't, I don't know what to say, except I hope that, um, you know, I think the best way to, to break down falsehoods is to confront it with facts. And uh, I hope these, these, these individuals who seem um, to be very intelligent but otherwise misguided will sit down and read the real history. Um, and, you know, if one of them, if, if they want to chat, you know, I'd be willing to chat with one of them. Um, you know, if anybody wants to chat with me about, about history, especially, I'd be willing to talk. All right. Thank you for tuning into the Common Sense Academy. This was a meet and greet with the Moors in Southern Florida, um, from the Rise of the Moors channel, which I'm going to link to below. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Common Sense Academy out.